So we all know that this large planet is filled with all types of creepy, crawly creatures. But have you ever thought to yourself, I wonder what the most annoying and dangerous critters of all time are? There it is. Uh, not a stone, but a stone fish. Just how deep are those oceans and what nonsense is hiding down below those waves? And have we really talked about all the different types of poisonous reptiles out there? Maybe we have and maybe we haven't. Either way, let's get psyched up because today we're talking about 15 animals you don't want problems with. Raylene was filled with about six condors. Portuguese man o' war. Our first animal that you definitely don't want any issues with is the infamous Portuguese man o' war. This slippery creature is often mislabeled as a jellyfish, but they're actually a type of siphonophore. A siphonophore, for those who don't know, isn't just one creature, it's thousands, made up with tiny, identical individuals called zooids that all have different functions. When the zooids come together like this, well, we get one of the weirdest things floating around in the ocean. They're typically found in tropical and subtropical waters, and they don't necessarily swim. Their movement throughout their dwelling is a result of the winds and ocean currents, and sometimes these creatures can be found floating together with other siphonophores with numbers that creep into the thousands. But the true question is, how dangerous are they? While Portuguese man o' wars are equipped with venom that can paralyze and even kill small fish, their attacks on humans are rare, and if they do happen, they often result in little more than a welt. A painful sting, sure, but most will survive an attack from the incredulous water creature. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Bed bugs. If you've ever had to deal with our next creature, then knock on wood, because this is perhaps the most stress-inducing nuisance found anywhere on planet Earth. Of course, we're talking about bed bugs. These tiny brown devils have found their way into every corner of the world. They can and will thrive in people's homes, apartments, college dorms, public transportation, movie theaters, even retail stores and hospitals. So yeah, bed bugs can and do live everywhere. More than that, these creatures are hardy, meaning they don't go down easy. Bed bugs can survive for months without food, which if you didn't know by now is human blood. Ugh. Not only can they live for so long between meals, but extreme weather conditions also have minimal effect. Bed bugs can reportedly survive in everything from near freezing temps to all the way up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. The methodical insect feeds during the night and then retreats to their hiding spot before morning. If you or anyone you know has a bed bug infestation, the best thing to do is just contact the professionals. If you try and go at it alone, you'll likely end up wasting lots of money on supplies that don't completely eradicate the problem. <laughs> the Northern Snakehead I don't know about you, but I like my creepy fish to just stay in the water, not on land. But that's exactly what you get with the Northern Snakehead, an invasive fish known to thrive in the waters of China that's exactly that's recently been found in the U.S. state of Georgia. And here's the thing. This fish has been known to live on land for up to four days. First spotted in the 1950s, the northern snakehead first made an appearance stateside back in 2002. Its unique respiratory system is what allows the animal to survive out of water for such an extended duration. It gets its name from the distinctive markings on its head, which is eerily reminiscent of a rattlesnake. It's considered invasive because of the damage it does to natural ecosystems, which is primarily because the females can lay, get this, 100,000 eggs per year. Sheesh, I'd hate to see the babysitting bill for all of that. <laughs> Toxic cane toads. Moving right along, now we'll focus on another super invasive species, toxic cane toads. Trekking across Australia at an impressive speed, these warty amphibians are an incredible nuisance. Way back in the early 1900s, Puerto Rico was looking for a solution to a very costly problem. Grubs were consistently and relentlessly eating their crops, and they needed to act fast. So they imported these gigantic toads from South America to help eat those pesky grubs and combat the problem. And it worked. A little too well, perhaps. In 1935, parts of Australia tried the same thing to ward off the beetles that were devouring their crops. 
The problem with the toxic cane toad is that they're, well, toxic. If larger prey is to eat a large or adult toxic cane toad, it could die, which is self-explanatory as to why that would be a problem. The toad was also introduced to Florida, and in the summer of 2020, after heavy rainfall, the toads emerged from their burrows and started breeding. Domestic dogs then began chasing, licking, and eating those toads with some fatal results. Mm -hmm. The Sydney Funnel Web Spider Well, we knew it wouldn't take too long, right? From underwater zooids to toxic amphibians, up next it's finally time for the itsy bitsy spider. Well, maybe itsy and bitsy are a bit of an exaggeration here. Known to many as the most dangerous spider in the world, up next is the Sydney Funnel Web Spider, native to Australia. Sheesh, they can't seem to catch a break down there, can they? But the funnel web spider has about 30 different species. They can be found in rock crevices, cracks in foundation, holes in trees, pretty much anywhere that they can fit. Their bites can sometimes even be deadly to humans. These spiders build funnel-shaped webs and then lay in their burrow until their prey presents itself. The largest of the funnel webs are the northern tree funnel web spider, who's been known to reach up to two inches of body. Ugh and typically lives in the New South Wales and Queensland areas of Australia. <laughs> the Komodo Dragon Moving right along, up next we've got the deadliest real dragon on the planet, the Komodo Dragon. The world's largest lizard may surprise you with how it takes down its prey. However, because it isn't just their 60 curved serrated teeth that you should fear, Komodo Dragons are notoriously venomous hosting several different types of bacteria in their mouths and have been known to stalk prey for hours after they've bitten them as the animal slowly bleeds out. The dominant predator on the Indonesian islands they occupy, these animals can grow up to 10 feet and weigh up to 150 pounds. So, long story short, they're not to be trifled with. Animals, or the rare human, that's bitten by Komodo dragons are infected with a venom that immediately stops the victim's blood from clotting, causing them to slowly but surely bleed to death. <laughs> venomous Selenodon From venomous reptiles to venomous mammals, up next we've got the Selenodon, an animal that's described as venomous, nocturnal, and insectivorous. That's a good word. That last word there simply meaning that they eat insects. The reason these little rodents are so popular, however, is because of their ability to inject venom into their prey. Just like a snake, once they bite into their victim, they immediately begin injecting it with that deadly venom, which clearly is a highly unusual attribute for mammals. Both Selenidin species live in Cuba and Hispaniola, and unfortunately there isn't a whole lot known about these extremely private animals. We do know that their venom isn't typically lethal for humans, but that doesn't mean animal experts won't use gloves while handling them. It's always better to be safe than sorry. The truly fascinating thing is that millions of years ago, venomous mammals were much more common. Evolution has clearly shifted that, and these two remaining selenidin species may soon be extinct as well, as they're both currently in danger due to deforestation and being hunted for by larger animals and even humans. <laughs> the Baboon Invasion if a human was to repeatedly break and enter into homes in your town and then take several items at their discretion, they'd likely go to jail if they're caught. But what the heck would you do with a wild animal that keeps doing the same thing? Well, if you're a seaside village in South Africa, you formally evict that crazy creature. Kataza, a baboon, recently recruited a bunch of friends to do some B&E in Cape Town. He was finally captured and initially placed into what essentially was an animal prison. Kataza isn't the only baboon in Cape Town with sticky fingers, but it does seem that he was unfairly singled out. The truth is that baboons are foragers who look for food wherever and whenever they can. So these urban baboons, who know they can find food in and around the homes of humans, understand that if they want to eat, there's pretty good chance that they can find a place to do that in urbanized areas. So what do you think? Should these hungry baboons be punished for basically being hungry baboons, or should humans find a better way to deal with this problem? <laughs> Don't step on the stonefish. Trekking through the oceans can be beautiful visually, but also extremely painful and even deadly physically if you step in the wrong place. And one of those wrong places is most certainly on top of the stonefish. 
also known as the most venomous fish in the sea. Found in the rocks and muddy areas of the Indo-Pacific region, stonefish can kill you in a matter of minutes. This deceptive-looking sea creature uses amazing camouflaging ability. You can swim right past these bad boys and not even know it. But the real danger comes into play when the stonefish hang out in shallow waters. Divers that step into the incredibly deadly animals and unknowingly enact its defense mechanism, 13 spines that line its back that unleash deadly venom when they come under pressure, are often affected. While there have been very few reported cases of death attributed to this rock-faced creature, that doesn't mean they're any less deadly, though we can find comfort in the fact that the stonefish won't come out looking for trouble, but if you put your foot in the wrong place and step on it, it could be the last step you ever take. <laughs> Furry Puss Caterpillars Let's climb out of those waves and hop back onto land to introduce you to a highly toxic caterpillar with a very, uh, unique name. The furry puss caterpillar has been said to look like a wig, which I can see, but I'm also definitely warning you to never, ever touch them. That's because these are some of the more poisonous caterpillars in all of the United States. That luxurious looking coat of hair is just there to hide extremely venomous spines whose stings have been known to send people to the hospital. These creatures have been spotted from Virginia to Georgia, all the way down to Florida, and have even been known to fall from trees into people's clothes. Sometimes the victim will even be stung multiple times simply because they don't know the caterpillar is stuck in their shirt. A sting from the furry puss caterpillar will almost instantly result in swelling and redness near the injection site. But for some folks, they'll also experience a fever, headache, vomiting, a drop in blood pressure, and even a seizure if they're that unlucky. With their population on the rise, we'd all be wise to inform our young children to never, ever touch these little fellas. Just let them be and hopefully they won't come looking for any trouble. <laughs> Condor Invasion Living in California comes with plenty benefits, including all the different environments they have to observe nature's most breathtaking wildlife. But when that wildlife decides to settle onto your home as if it were their very own playground, well, that could end up being a problem. Just ask Cindy Mickles, a homeowner in Tehachapi, who in the spring of 2021 began having a huge issue with the local condor population. California condors are critically endangered birds that nearly went extinct back in the 80s. They were sacred to Native Americans and are only alive today thanks to a breeding program set to stabilize the population. Cinda, however, has had to deal with them in ways that not many other citizens have, more than 15 of the birds, which can weigh up to 24 pounds, recently decided to occupy her deck, and as you can imagine, they left quite the mess. As a result, she resorted to screaming, jumping, and even spraying water at the pesky birds, all to get them to leave her house alone. And I can't say that I blame her, since being reintroduced to Central and Southern California, the once elusive bird now holds populations in Utah, Arizona, and Mexico as well. Asian Carp Onslaught Toss on your swimsuits and let's hop back into the water, because up next we've got the ever-invasive Asian Carp. The species includes the big head, black, grass, and silver carps, and these fish are causing all kinds of issues in the Mississippi River and even its surrounding waters. After being introduced to the U.S. for use in aquaculture ponds, occasional flooding has allowed for these fish to find their way into the Mississippi River which is basically like a large aquatic highway with many ways for the fish to find their way into other water areas. Once they're there, Asian carp can cause serious damage to the native fish population. They simply beat them to the available food, usually plankton, and overwhelm the area with massive numbers. There are also reports that the Asian carp will lower the water quality, which then kills off more sensitive creatures in the water, such as freshwater mussels. They do this by foraging into the riverbed, stirring the mud and dirt up into the water, making it murky. This has serious effects like reducing spawning habitats and making it harder for young fish to hide from and evade predators. <laughs> Deadliest Snails As we continue through this list of deadly animals that shouldn't be trifled with up next, we have something most people never pay any attention to. Snails. Again, some of the most venomous creatures on Earth, your most venomous is going to be the geographic cone snail. Cone snails are found in every corner of the world and generally stray in shallow water, 
buried in the sand during the day and actively hunting during the night. They're equipped with a venomous tooth that can shoot into the fish, deploying a deadly toxin. Once injected, the fish are prohibited from swimming away. Their tissue also slowly deteriorates as the snail then will eat the fish whole. Ugh. But just how dangerous are cone snails to human beings? The different species of cone snail all come equipped with different types and sizes of beautiful shells, but be careful. Unknowingly picking up a live cone snail could mean that you're injected with its venom. And hypothetically, a fully grown adult has enough venom to potentially kill up to 700 people. Stink bugs. We've had some interesting names of creatures on today's list. So why stop now? Up next, we've got the accurately named stink bugs. Another invasive species that originated from Asia, stink bugs were first introduced to Pennsylvania back in 1996. Since then, they've migrated throughout essentially all of the United States, and it's not uncommon to come across these pesky insects in your attic during months where temperatures tend to decrease. These six-legged, brown bugs typically grow to a little under an inch long, and because they have no natural predators here in the United States, they're pretty much allowed free reign wherever they decide to roam. Now the next question obviously is, why are they called stink bugs? Well, get this, when the stink bug feels threatened, they release an extremely unpleasant odor, which scientists say detracts predators from going through with their plot to dine on the smelly insect. These brown bugs have also arrived in the UK and are being blamed for overindulging on people's fruits and vegetable crops. And if you want to hear something really gross, sometimes groups of stink bugs can infest grapevines and inadvertently get ground with the grapes and end up in the wine. So if you've ever come across a bottle that had a funny smell, the stink bug may be the culprit. The world's most dangerous bird. And finally, we've reached our number one animal that you don't want a problem with that just so happens to also be the most dangerous bird in the world, the deadly and dreaded cassowary. This large flightless bird is most closely related to an emu. And recently in Australia, they've been breaking into people's homes. Can you even imagine? These things have claws that are five inches long. In northern Queensland, a man was attacked by one back in 2017, and experts feared it's because the bird was used to being fed by humans. And when food isn't provided, they could become aggressive, which is yet another reason we've all heard the age-old advice to never ever feed wild animals. Ugh, maybe one day somebody will listen. The cassowary is the world's second heaviest and third tallest bird. Their bodies are covered with full black feathers that almost give the appearance of a full head of hair. They come equipped with strong legs as well, and if you're a bird that can't fly, well, strong legs can't hurt. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today, and don't forget to like, comment, and share the post with all your friends. We really hope you learned some useful information, and we can't wait to see you next time. <laughs>